Hello viewers, uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Today I have a very special personality with me who has thousands of followers, uh, not in Australia, but around the world. Um, and he has got tremendous services for the Islamic community. Very kind, very humble, very generous. No other than Sheikh Shadi Al Suleiman with me. Salam alaikum, brother. Alaikum salam, rahmatullah. How are you, brother? Good. Thank you very much for giving me time. Uh, I know you're a very busy person. Uh, <clears throat> before uh, I start on um, your uh, projects and services you have been delivering for so long to the community, I would like to ask uh, about your own life uh, and your uh, journey for uh, a long uh, journey to be who made you today a well-known Islamic scholar. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam rasulullah. Jazakallah khair for this interview and for the humble words. So I originally come from a Palestinian background. My father migrated to Australia in the late 60s. So we've been in Australia for nearly 50 years. I was born and raised here in Australia. I went to local schools and then uh, when I was 16 years old, I decided to go overseas and study in Pakistan for two years, right. in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me to memorize the Quran al-Kareem. And then I went to Syria, Damascus, for six years, in which I went to acquire Islamic knowledge and Arabic studies. I came back in 2001. And then when I came back, I was considered to be from the first Australian-born imams, to graduate as an imam. And alhamdulillah, I came back and I started to focus on the da'wah work, especially on the youth those who are born and raised here and that has been my journey ever since then just focus on those who are born and raised in Australia and work with uh, national international imams and uh, work closely with the community with the Muslim community and the wider Australian community at the end of the day we are trying to promote the true image of Islam in which unfortunately has been distorted by Muslims and non-Muslims all right uh, I've seen your uh, many works but when I went to uh, last year your UMS center in Bristol and then at that time uh, you told me that we are building a new one and you will come and see what there's going to be. Recently uh, when I uh, went there, you invited me there, I saw an um, unbelievable work you have done that um, center. So uh, tell me about, uh, about UMA, its facilities and how the people should get uh, the benefits of this center and how they can support more to this center. So, regarding the UMA, it's a centre that we established about 15 years ago right. for the reason of to attract youngsters to come to a youth centre. Mm. So I moved away from uh, just establishing traditional mosques and Islamic centres into a youth centre. And the centre that you visited us last week, it was uh, the, the UMA centre in Riverwood. Mm. And then, alhamdulillah, this year we moved to Padsta. So the centre is an encompassing centre that includes many different facilities for the community. And that's one of the objectives that we've got, is to focus on the community for all the different age groups, the different categories of the community, different classes of the community, different genders of the community. And Alhamdulillah, we have different facilities there such as a gym, the masjid, the recreation home, the offices, the cafe, the boxing area, the youth area, the lecture hall, the classrooms. And Alhamdulillah, this is only the first phase. And it's all from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. wa ma tawfiqi illa billah. This is the blessing of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala upon us. And inshallah, we continue to pursue this journey in uh, serving the community and uh, prospering Islam in this country. I have seen some classrooms as well, which are ready made now, ready, ready to start now. So do you have a plan to start some schools or already started? Okay, a school, nine to <coughs> three school, no. Hmm. And the zoning doesn't allow that. However, what we've been doing is afternoon schools and we've, we've been doing weekend schools. So Alhamdulillah, that's one of the things that we've been doing, afternoon school and weekend school and uh, providing different uh, education facilities for youngsters and adults. Uh, dear viewers, uh, I came into contact with uh, Sheikh uh, Shadi al Suleiman in 2016 when we were organizing the International Halal Conference 2016 uh, and that was the part of the Halal Expo which has been going on now. And uh, when we um, asked him uh, and explained to him about the Halal Expo and International Conference. And he listened to us and he said, um, that's a fantastic thing you are doing. Uh, it's a good event and I'll be there. And since then, he has been with us, he's supporting us. He's been the, one of the uh, uh, very famous speakers because we know that when people, when we talk about the Halal Expo and the conference part of it, they 
the first question they asked is Sheikh Shahidi is coming again. So how, do you, uh, how did you find uh, the Halal Expo? Because we spoke to you and you never uh, uh, been there. There was a first time you're going to an event which you didn't know how it's going to be. So now you attended two events, and inshallah, the next one is coming. So how did you find the Halal Expo Australia so, and the conference partner? It's a very much needed initiative, so yeah. I commend you on your great work you and your team. It's a very important conference for us to have to create the awareness on halal and what's halal. And one of the main things that I really liked about the conference is that we're not only just focusing on halal consumption, because to us, as a Muslim Ummah, as Muslims, halal is a way of life, not only what we eat and drink, it's a way of life. And that's a very important angle that we need to always tackle, yeah. an angle that we need to always emphasize on and stress on, that halal is a way of life. So what we eat, what we drink, what we hear, where we look, and uh, everything we do in our lives. So Islam is about a halal way of life. Right, true. Uh, now, viewers, uh, the uh, Australian National Imam Council, uh, ANIC we call, also started the halal certification body. So, and uh, alhamdulillah, um, uh, ANIC uh, is going to be uh, the official uh, halal certification body for Halal Exhibition Australia as well. Tell me something about ANIC's uh, certification body now, please. So, we'll talk you about ANIC, then we'll move into the Inshallah. ANIC initiative, which is the ANIC Halal Authority. So, ANIC, the Australian National Imams Council, that we are in the office of the Australian National Imams Council right now. Is and you are an, the president now. I'm the current president of the Australian National Imams Council. So it's an umbrella organisation for the state Imams Council across Australia. So we've got the Council of Imams New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland, South Australia, Western Australia and Canberra. And the, the Australian National Imams Council is the umbrella organisation that encompasses all the state Imams Councils. We have about 200 Imams across Australia. Marshall. It's a unified and united body that brings the Imams together and it keeps the Imams working together. And that's one of the great achievements that we uh, we as a Muslim community here in Australia are very fortunate of to have such a body that brings the Imams together because I haven't seen a similar model an example of the Australian National Imams Council or Council of Imams anywhere around the world like what we've got in Australia because Alhamdulillah we include the vast majority of Imams across Australia and the purpose of the Australian National Imams Council is to keep the Mashaykh together and becomes an authority body for the Muslim community when it comes to Islamic affairs, when it comes to religious affairs, when it comes to Islamic scholarship. Right. One of the branches and departments that we've got as under the Australian National Imams Council is ANIC Halal Authority, which is a halal certification body that certifies uh, consumptions where people need to know whether this uh, consumption is halal or is it non-halal. So one of the things that we focus on as uh, the ANIC Halal Authority is halal certification. And alhamdulillah, we've got qualified management, but more importantly, we've got a qualified halal advisory committee from the Mufti of Australia, myself, and different imams from different states. Right. So ANIC Halal Authority is initiated by the imams, and it's run by the imams, and it's managed by the imams. Mm -hmm. And that's an advantage that we have as part of the ANIC <coughs> Halal Authority. It's uh, established by the imams, initiated by the imams, it's managed by the imams, is supervised by the Imams and Alhamdulillah it's been taken care of by the Imams which which gives them that credibility, it gives them that authority because we're talking about halal and people want to know if, is this halal or is this non-halal right. and the Imams have more authority than anyone else for them to say whether this type of consumption halal or not. That mashallah, one actually concerns to the community I, I came across is um, uh, that's a halal certification of course for the meat and all consumption product but people also are worried about there are lots of uh, finance uh, companies uh, interest free loans uh, and they claim halal finance now is there uh, as far as i know in australia uh, there is no any uh, known body which can certify those companies do you think that that um, should be under the halal certification or what what do you think in your experience what the people need to do so anik halal authority as I mentioned before it's something that focuses on consumptions right foods and drinks and other matters that revolve around that now when it comes to islamic finance right. anik as an organization has been engaging with a number of different islamic uh, institutes or banking institutes when it comes to that. So we've got oh, a number right. of uh, Islamic banking institutes or financial Islamic institutes that have been coming to ANIC and seeking uh, ANIC's advice and oh, asking right. ANIC for their advice. Now whether we're going to put that as under ANIC Halal Authority or we'll just keep it under ANIC as a general thing, at the end of the day they're all one thing 
Mm. So that's one department and that's a different department. But Alhamdulillah, we've been receiving a number of uh, consultations from a number of different Islamic financial institutes seeking annex approval and annex advice on those matters. So that's something that we we'll also look at. And as I mentioned, one of the advantages that we have as an annex is that we include and encompass the ma vast majority of mashaykh and imams here in Australia. And uh, that's where people come to. They come to Anik, they seek Anik's advice, religious advice when it comes to <coughs> Islamic matters, religious matters, understanding the Sharia and what Sharia sanctions and what the Sharia constitutes, allows and doesn't allow. And if there's anyone that should be talking about that, the Imams, not the common people. The Imams are the ones who have the authority and have that credibility. Right, right. Now, um, at the end, uh, I would like to ask you if you would like to give any message uh, in general to the Islamic community. Uh, and also particularly for the message for our uh, next event of Halal Expo 2018 which is going to be in February. The Muslim community whether locally or internationally in Australia or overseas we are encountering a lot of challenges. Right. We are facing a lot of challenges as a Muslim community and one of the challenges that we are facing is the Islamic identity and Halal is part of the Islamic identity so it's something that you can't disconnect, right. you can't detach from our Islamic identity. We believe in a halal way of life, we believe in a halal way of consumption, ha halal way of dealing with matters. You mentioned before Islamic finance to the end of it. So halal to us is not just what we eat and drink, halal to us is a way of life yep. in all aspects of life. And uh, it's important for us to preserve our Islamic identity, even Muslims living in Australia. And part of the preservation of the Islamic identity is to preserve the concept of halal because Islam revolves around halal. And that's why I commend you again for the Halal Expo in Australia. And it's important that we support such initiatives and uh, get the community to support it. Mm. And uh, one of the main things, and that's something that we had a discussion in the past, one of the objectives and goals of the Halal Expo Australia is for us to create the awareness about halal. Right. Yeah. What's halal? What's the meaning of halal? What do we achieve out of halal? So it's good to create the awareness. And that shouldn't stop at just the Halal Expo Australia, but mm. that's a way of life for us also to promote and propagate Islam through the halal way of life and if we continue living the halal way of life that's da'wah within itself. Inshallah. So inshallah we hope that the community can support this initiative. Once again the Australian National Imams Council is a major sponsor and a major supporter of the Halal Expo Australia this year and inshallah we are looking forward to working closely with you and your team. Inshallah brother thank you very much giving me time. I know your time is very uh, limited for us because very busy person and he's given us time today. And uh, viewers, uh, thank you very much. And inshallah, I'll be uh, see you again next time. It is very important for us as Muslims for us to create that awareness and change that wrong perception that a lot of people have about halal. Because the very first moment that you mention the word halal, the first perception that comes to people's mind that halal is what you eat. But to me as a Muslim, the word halal is beyond what I consume and what I eat. To me as a Muslim, the word halal is my way of life in all aspects of life. In every single matter of life, in every single angle and dimension of life. So to me, the word halal, yes, is what I eat. It's what I consume. But also, the word halal to me is the way I live. The way I interact. The way I deal with me and myself. The way I deal between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way I deal between me and others. And first and foremost, with my kings, with my mother and my father, how I deal with them is a halal relationship when I deal with them because there are a lot of things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands that when it comes to dealing with my parents it must be halal and there's a lot of ways that Allah Azza says this is haram, this is forbidden for you, for you to deal with your parents on that form. The way I deal with my wife, my spouse, whether I'm a husband, whether I'm a wife, there is that halal relationship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to implement in our life. The way I deal with my children is also that halal way of life. And when we say the word halal, there's always the opposite understanding of it, the opposite action of it, and that's haram. And the word halal means permissibility. And the word haram means forbidden actions. And it is not only that, but Islam even takes it to the next level. And not only how you deal with the close ones, but even how you deal with every single person. Whether they are to be your friends or your fowls, your relatives or those that are far away from you, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims, whether are those who are supporters of Islam or those who are anti-Islam, Islam comes and covers that subject and tells us how to deal with one another. And you know what? Islam even takes it to the next level. 
And Islam not only tells you how to deal with your relationship and what's your relationship when it comes to mankind and how to deal with people, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims, whether they are friends or fellows, enemies or supporters. Even Islam tells us how to deal with the environment. 